Hopefully this will be a fun little guide about the nature of the ships of EVE Online when we compare the five major racial types. In EVE, these are not actual alien races that belong to a different species, but there are some groups in EVE that are so different in their development, they might as well be alien. Now if you're mildly familiar with EVE, you're now saying, but hang on, why five? After all, when you start the game, you can only choose one of the four starting races. Let's go over those four first, and then we will cover the mysterious fifth a little bit later. When a new player, or even an old player, creates a new character in EVE, we are able to choose the starting race. This doesn't mean they are restricted to using that race's hardware, although it will determine the starting location of the character, and some starting racial ship skills. What is more important is the skill queue. For those who are new to EVE or who don't play, the skill queue is a time training system that unlocks certain weapons, gear, performance bonuses, and ships. Training into these can take some time, so for new players it matters if you specialize in a particular ship line, and this training can be paused or changed at any time if you're willing to delay whatever you're currently training for. For example, it can take months to train into an Amar Titan, such as the amazing Follic 13 km long Avatar, and then longer still to optimize the ability of that super ship. Training into a Tech 1 frigate, however, may take only a matter of days or hours. Okay, so let's get to the four selectable player races. The Galente Federation, the Kaldari State, the Amar Empire, and the Minmatar Republic. The Galente Federation are the sort of liberal democrats of the game based on a kind of French inheritance, although if you dig into the lore, this often is a front for corruption and self-righteous war crusading. Their ships rarely have sharp edges, and symmetry is not a priority for them. Dark green seems to be their basic color theme. Most people either love or hate this aesthetic. Some ships are phallic looking, or even resemble a deformed potato or something lurking in your toilet. However, they do not lack in character. Most Galente ships are bonused for one or two of the major weapons types, hybrid turrets and combat drones. Hybrid turrets include short range but highly destructive blasters and longer range railguns. Combat drones include dozens of different types and categories but Galente ships such as the Vexor line and especially the Ishtar can more effectively deploy drones than any other ships in the game. With the staggering variety of combat drones, this makes Galenti ships very versatile in combat. The problem with combat drones is that they can be destroyed. If you have many spares, that's just fine, but if the enemy, especially a PvPer, thinks to blast them as soon as they launch, or wipe them out with proximity weapons such as smart bombs, you will quickly become defanged. Also some heavy drones, such as ogres, can easily be outrun or outmaneuvered by smaller ships and newer players may not have the savvy to properly watch and manage their drones, or choose which drones types to use. The module layout of Galenti ships is fairly balanced. The low slot modules tend to be just a bit higher in number than the mid slot modules. For those who don't know the difference, mid slots are for mostly player activated modules and some passive shield buffs, and they're used for control devices such as warp disruption and stasis webifiers to slow targets down, and also e-warfare such as jams or target dampeners. A ship with more low slots will tend towards armor or even hull tanking, which is the case for Galente ships, although there is enough of a balance here so that shield tanking can also be pulled off. But Galente ships have a large amount of hull hit points. Hull tanking used to be a silly meme, and not very viable until the balance patch which increased the hull hit points of Galente ships, making hull tanking actually viable for many of them. Personally, I find Galente ships to be my default. I find myself in a Galente ship most of the time, since once you are familiar with them, it's kind of hard to quit them, as they may be some of the most well-rounded ships in the game. The ship design of the Caldari State is almost an opposite of the Galente in aesthetics and there may be a cultural reason for this. The Caldari State broke away from the Galenti Federation after some near genocidal behavior from the Galenti Federation, which resulted in wars that would eventually lead to the Caldari developing the Capsuleer technology, which 
means us, players or clones. Caldari ships are all straight edges and gray in color. In spite of this dull color, they take custom ship skins quite well. They have a spindly construction for some of them, like the Caracal, but don't let this fool you. Caldari ships are less tanky in hull and armor. They make up for this with more shield hit points and more modules for mid slots than any other ships in the game. Just like the Galente, their primary weapons for turrets are hybrid turrets. But unlike the Galente, they also use missiles. Lots of missiles. Missiles and rockets do not have a fall off damage, so you can more easily choose where you want to fight as long as the target is within the flight range of the missiles. With all the mid slots, you can put a great deal of focus on range control and maneuvering. Many Kaldari players are fanatical about their ships. The only real problem with training into Kaldari is that they do not cross train well with other races. 90% of the time you're going to be shield tanking a Kaldari ship. This means that the skills for engineering systems, hull and armor tanking are often neglected. And if you find yourself with a group that wants you to fly a particular fleet doctrine that isn't Kaldari, this can make things a challenge for new and even intermediate players. The leaders of the Amar Empire are quite the peacocks. The aesthetic of other races just will not do for an Amar fleet. Most of their ships are meant to be very aesthetically pleasing, at least on the surface level, although some may look like turkeys or have the most phallic appearance of all ships in EVE. Each to their own, eh? Amar ships tend towards lasers as their primary weapon, but their secondary weapons are drones and occasionally missiles. Lasers have a narrow damage type and use a lot of capacitor power, but their damage projection is great. Also great is the fact that they don't require ammo in the same way of other ships, just frequency crystals, which makes their lasers a potent weapon type that few other races can utilize. Some of our ships are also very well bonus to energy neutralizers or energy vampires, which can drain the capacity of the target, rendering a lot of their systems dead in the water. Their slot layout is almost the opposite of Kaldari ships, with many low slots for engineering, armor tanking, and damage bonuses, and few mid slots. Armor tanking is usually the name of the game for Amar ships. Many Amar fits can absorb far more damage than any of their counterparts. They have a Tech 1 frigate that can absorb cruiser level damage, and they have a cruiser that can absorb battleship level damage. We're referring to the Punisher and the Mauler respectively here. But these kinds of fits are not exactly fast or maneuverable. However, some of the Navy issue ships of the MR can be fit for speed quite easily, such as the Imperial Navy Slicer and the Omen Navy issue. Overall, MR ships are not quite as well-rounded as other racial types, but they do cross-train a bit better than Kaldari ships, since low-slot training for armor or engineering bonuses can easily be applied to more ship types, and they cross-train well with Galente especially. Minmatar ships are supposed to be the ugly dilapidated ships of Eve somehow rusting in space and held together with duct tape. Well, I disagree. I love the scrappy yet cool aesthetic of the Minmatar ships. The Minmatar were once slaves of the Amar Empire and some of them still are. Their poverty stricken low tech society was forced to improvise effective no nonsense solutions for fighting their oppressors and they succeeded in that. Mimitar ships are the only ones bonus for projectile turrets, or good old fashioned guns. Both of the projectile turret systems, artillery and auto cannons, require no capacitor charge to run, so energy neutralizers will not affect these. Their damage type and range can vary a bit depending on the ammo used. Artillery has the most devastating alpha strike of any weapons in EVE, making the Mimitar fits some of the most effective snipers. Their secondary weapons are often missiles or drones. Mimitar ship layouts are the most balanced in the game. This means you can shield tank, armor tank, speed tank, use E-War or control systems, whatever you want to do. Mimitar ships for PvP used to be called Winmitar until several balanced patches later. They are still very effective PvP ships. On paper, they may not appear to be as tanky or have as much firepower as other races, although they have good speed but their tank and firepower is effective dependent on how they are used. Versatility is the name of the game with Mimitar ships. Well that covers the four major races, now before we move on to the fifth, I should touch on pirate designs. The pirate category of ships 
can be found on the open market like any ships, although personally I think they should require a red or criminal sex status to use, but they come from loot drops when fighting the NPC pirates. Each major empire has at least one criminal organization. For the Galenti, it's the Serpentis. For the Mimitar, it's the Angel Cartel. For the Mar, it's the Blood Raiders and the Sancha, etc. All of these wicked ships are highly effective in combat. They do require cross-training. For example, the Daredevil frigate requires both Galente and Mimitar frigate training to use it. And now onto the fifth race, which is the one you cannot choose as a starting race. This is because they are a mysterious, highly advanced precursor civilization that over the past few years has appeared on the scene from the depths of abyssal space to fight against what they call their ancient nemesis. And the New Eden Cluster seems to have somehow been caught up in the middle of this conflict. That race is the Triglavians. In my opinion, Triglavian ships are the most interesting and badass looking ships in the game. Just based on this, they are a pleasure for me to fly. They are powered by black body radiation and filaments, which you can see working on every Triglavian ship. They are also obsessed with multiples of three, which is also very apparent on their ship designs. Their primary weapon is the Entropic Disintegrator, which is a turret weapon that appears as a black ball floating above a spinning platform. They emit a beam that initially does an average, if not unimpressive, amount of damage. But the longer the disintegrator beam is on, the more damage ramps up until it can reach insane levels. In fact, the Triglavian battleship, the Lashak, is capable of ramping its damage up to a level unattainable by any other battleship, with the possible exception of Marauders, but I'd have to do some checking and tests on that. Although these weapons have no falloff damage over range, so you can project a lot of damage over a relatively long range. In spite of its power, Disintegrators have two weaknesses. Although they have no falloff damage over range, once the target is out of range, they simply shut off, which means the damage spool has to be restarted. Also, if the target lock is lost, perhaps because of some jamming or target dampening, the weapon becomes useless and shuts off, thus again has to restart its damage ramp up if it ever regains the lock. An interesting aspect of almost all Triglavian combat ships is that they have a bonus to remote armor repair modules, meaning they can more easily repair the armor of a buddy in trouble from a distance. Of course, these ships tend towards armor tanking. They may not be quite as speedy as many Mimitar ships, but they are very agile and they have a small signature radius, meaning they are harder to hit than most ships. The Disintegrator also takes up only one weapon slot. This means that there are a few free slots up there available, which are often taken up by remote armor reppers or energy neutralizers. Trigolavian ships are powerful and great. However, they are not for new players, and even some intermediate players may have problems with them. The first reason for this is they're simply expensive. They're not quite as expensive as pirate ships, but the skill books to make them truly awesome can be pricey, especially to unlock the Tech 2 Disintegrators, so training into these is the other challenge. Although Triglavian ships can be very effective solo, their armor rep bonuses suggest they are more effective in a group, and they are. Only it is not always easy to get everyone on the same page when using this as a doctrine. For one reason, the pilots must be familiar with how to easily manage their reps on their friends. Another reason is because you kind of have to go out of your way to get the skill books and train for these. Due to the nature of their weapons, Triglavian ships are very popular for destroying space structures or space stations with many hit points. Doing this with lower DPS ships is a grueling and tedious task, but since over time, Triglavian ships can ramp up their DPS to terrifying levels, they are an elegant solution to this problem. I find flying Triglavian ships very addictive. Alright, aside from these five, the industrial ships and the pirate variants, this sums up the main ship lines, which is not to say there are not more to come. It is very possible someday the creepy ass drifters will be absconded with their technology and we will get to fly their ships too, although it may be a while. Now that sums it up for this video. If you want information on me or my corp, have a look at the description. Be sure to subscribe and like, and feel free to comment or ask questions. Until next time, space friends, with this stagging retake, since you are f retake.
more so are missiles. Lots of missiles. Missiles and rockets do not have... No, let's read that. Many MR ship fits can absorb far more damage than any of their counter retake. They have a Tech 1 crit. They have retake. But the longer the disintegrating beam retake, 